Jesus. Amen. To the deacons of our wonderful church. Amen. To the mothers of the church. Amen. Certainly thank God for this choir. Let's bless God for them. Amen. First Lady, amen. 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 To these ushers and to everyone who makes up this congregation, we greet you in divine love. Amen. 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 We're not going to trouble you long today, but uh, we want to just call you to to look at yourself and see what the word of the Lord will say to you. Amen. From the book of Luke, chapter 16, and verse number 19. Luke, chapter 16, and verse Number 19. Hallelujah. Bless his wonderful name. Amen. Luke chapter 16, verse number 19. Have you Mark? Look. You look at Lamentations. Keep going. Keep going. Looking at Leviticus, you really need to go and keep going. Praise the Lord. And the word reads There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, who fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of swords, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his swords, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, Lazarus in his bosom. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Said Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they would not pass from hence to you, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if once went again from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they will not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. All right. 
I want to talk about trying to send a postcard from hell. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Trying to send a postcard from hell. My brothers and sisters, this story uh, in Luke is a story that I'm sure if you've been around the church anytime, take this down, just look at that. It's just too much on that. Amen. I'm sure that you've heard this if you've been around. That's perfect right there. Just leave it right there. Amen. Uh, you heard preachers teach this, and you heard others that may have ministered from this topic. Uh, the story is about a rich man uh, that in the Latin is called Davies. Uh, he, is a, he is a rich man, and the other character in the text is known by the name Lazarus. Uh, this parable or this teaching by Jesus tells how this rich man lived his life focused on the things that his money could afford. And he spent no time trying to focus on God. According to Jesus, this man lived a life that was sumptuous and splendorous. Uh, this man, as many would say, he lived in the lap of luxury. And my grandmama would say, son, he lived high on the hog. Are you going to help me today? He lived like this with all of his purple robes. He lived like this with all of his fine linen. He lived like this with feast and festive atmosphere in his home every day. Oh. Yeah. While outside of his gates there lay desperation. Yes, he was too uh, 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 consumed and self-centered uh -huh. to even be aware that there was somebody outside the gate mm -hmm. that was literally starving to death. Yes, uh, this beggar Lazarus, on the other hand, was a poor man. Yeah. He had nothing. He had nothing save his knowledge of the Lord himself. His only friend seemed to be God. Yeah. And Jesus sprinkled something else in there. He said that only and even the dogs. Uh -huh. uh, he was in such pitiful shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm that dogs would come and lick his sores. Yeah. The Bible says, listen, that both men die. Uh -huh. How many know that you can live like you're going to be here forever? Come on. But the truth is, all of us one day are going to leave here. Yes, amen. 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 amen, 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 with your good-looking self. Amen. amen, with your handsome self. Amen. amen, all of us have a day that we're going to leave this place. Amen, amen. some sooner, some later. But nevertheless, we will leave. And so the Bible says that both men die. Only as the rich man Text says that he was buried. No fanfare. No hoopla. He was simply buried. But when Lazarus died, the text illustrates that God dispatched angels and carried him into the bosom of Abraham. I'd rather be carried than to just be buried. I wish I had somebody. Else. He he, he, he's now in Abraham's book. Yeah. He's there no more agony, no more pain, no more hunger pain, no more suffering in his body. Yeah. He's there now in Abraham's bosom. Yeah. But look, if you will, at this rich man. The text says that he lifted up his eyes and he was in hell, yeah. uh, begging for mercy, yeah. begging for pity. Yeah. But I want you to see something. 
that what got this man into trouble is what's going to get a whole lot of us into trouble. Uh, this man, while he was living, he never said something cruel to Lazarus. Yes, sir. He never went out of his way to necessarily be mean to Lazarus. He simply acted as though he never saw Lazarus. Some of y'all better hear what I'm saying. And there are many today that act and live as though they are oblivious to what's going on around them. How is it that you can see somebody suffering and you not feel any kind of empathy for that in the pocket? When you have bread and bread enough to spare, yeah. see somebody hungry and you not want to do something. I wish I had somebody. Yeah. His problem was that in life he did not see Lazarus, though Lazarus was there. Now, you would have thought that in death he would have learned his lesson. But when you see the text, the text said that he lifted up his eyes in hell. Yes, and then he looked at a distance and saw Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham. Yes, My God. The same Lazarus that wanted the crumb that fell from his table. Yes, yes. They didn't have many time napkins and the fine linen that we have. So they would rich people, the, those that were well to do, they would take loads of bread. Yes, Break them and wipe their hands and throw it on the ground. Yeah. And the dog would come and eat those crumbs. Yeah. Yes, Lazarus was in such a desperate state yes, that he was not asking for something off the table. Yes, come on, come on. He was simply saying, give me yeah. what you give to the dog. I wish I had somebody yeah. here. Yeah. Watch what happens. Now, the tables have to come in somebody. Yeah. You gotta be careful how you treat people. Because one day sooner or later, God could turn. You don't think you need them now. You walk by like you don't need them. You don't speak to them. You hold your eyes. You say other things under your breath. But God has a way of turning. He's a God that can turn the table. Yes, Look at this man now. He sees Lazarus yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, over in uh -huh. Abraham's book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. You would have thought he would say Lazarus. Yes, but even in death, he's arrogant. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh -huh. Even in death, he was still trying to overlook yes, sir. Lazarus. Listen to what he said. He said, Amen, Father Abraham. Why don't you send Lazarus? Tell Lazarus to go dip his finger in some water and just come put it on the tongue. Two things, two things I want to talk about. First thing is, why didn't you talk to Lazarus? He's right there. Isn't that funny how people need your help? Yeah. Don't act like you doing, or they doing you a favor. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Abraham, tell him to go. Do this thing. If your house gets on fire, what good is a glass of water going to do you? If you burn it and on fire, what good is somebody sticking their finger in water? Yeah. That shows you how desperate yes, sir. that he was. Yes, listen, listen to what it says. This distress starts in verse 24. Yes, the rich man said, Lord, Lord, Father Abraham, have mercy. Isn't it funny? Yes, sir. You never showed mercy. Come on, come on. But now you won't. Isn't it how some folk are? When they got something, they don't want to know your name. <laughs> they look straight and don't look at them. <laughs> you better not let it go, up, man. <laughs> but when they run out, they 
didn't want everybody to help them. So they were not willing to lend a hand to help anybody else. They want you to pray for them, but they wouldn't take time off of somebody to pray for somebody else. They were turned now. He's in trouble. He's in pain. He's tormented. And he talks to Abraham. Tell him to go. He's not on our level. You tell him to go. Fetch me some water. Oh, I could talk about some stuff right there. <laughs> you broke. Come on. You trying to tell me how to bless you. Yeah. You ever see somebody like that? Yeah. You 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 going out to eat and you invite them to go, you know they don't have no money. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't about to eat nothing just a few minutes ago. <laughs> well, let me find something everybody can say. Amen. I decided to get mighty quiet again. It's not mighty quiet. He comes at him. Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor. And now that his his fortune had turned, yes, sir. Uh -huh. He went from doing well. Yes, sir. To living in hell. Yes, sir. Oh. He now is terrified. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. He wants a do-over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But but I came today to remind somebody that listen, once you get to the judgment, uh -huh. it's too late for any do-over. Do right. yes, when you die, everything that you're gonna do is done. Yes, yeah. uh -huh. Watch what happens. This man, this man. Realize where he is and his mind now has, 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 has caused him to cry for help. Yes, sir. And, and, and looks at, this is what Abraham told me. He said, he said, he said if we wanted to come, uh -huh. mm -hmm. we couldn't get to. Amen. Let me show you this. I don't know if y'all caught call this in the text. The text said that Abraham said, God has put a gulf mm -hmm. yes, sir. Uh -huh. yeah. between us. Yeah, yeah. See, some of y'all just read right over there. He's in hell. And there's a gulf. A gulf. That's water between. He's burning up. And got to sit there and look at it. Water. He says, he says, he says, God has fixed it. And, 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 and when I read this, I said, Lord, why would God fix it? I understood. Abraham said, he, he, he said, he said, God has fixed it where you can't come to us. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, sir. But then he said, God also fixed it where we can't come to you. Now, let me pause here because some of y'all need to hear this. God knew mm -hmm. that if some of your loved ones mm -hmm. come on, come on. ended up in hell, Oh Lord, look at my child. You would try to do something to get them out of that state and drag them over into where you are. But God said, I'm going to fix it where they can see you. You can see them. They can't come to you, and you can't go to them. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. You got to get this down. This is why it's so important yes, sir. that you don't waste time with foolishness. Yeah. All right. All right. You don't waste time with nonsense. You don't waste time being petty when it comes down to family folks. So you hear what I'm telling you? Because there's going to come a day when God is going to call all of our names. And listen, you won't be able to do anything for them now. Be. 
get hot, just real hot. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody got central air and all that stuff in your house now. But I remember years back yeah. when the car didn't have AC. Yeah. Chris, we had two fifty five. Two women died at 55 miles an hour. That was the AC. And then I remember the Tim at, at our house, we, we would let the window up. We didn't, we didn't say let the window up. We were, we were high school women. And put that fan in the window. Oh, it didn't get no better than that, mother. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? But I remember my wife and I, but we had some time when, particularly when we were living overseas, because a lot of the countries don't even have AC in the house. That's right. And then when a hot season comes, you got to suffer. Yeah. So we got over there and, and it was so hot. She trying to put her arm on me. I'm get your arm on me. It's too hot. Anybody know what she said? Y'all can't even look at that like that. Because when you really get hot, don't get all up on me when it's hot. Stay in your space.
before COVID, three, four hours a week. Since COVID, a couple of hours a week. And folks still mm -hmm. won't come. Church too long. I don't want to be in that long. Watch this. What will you do? If a couple hours on a Sunday is too much for you. What will you do when you get to heaven? But every day is Sunday. I don't like all that praise. What you gonna do? When you get to heaven, where well, all they do is pray and worship God. What you gonna do? I don't think you need all that dancing. What you gonna do when you get to heaven and folk dancing on the streets of the What you gonna do? Sometimes we, 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 we just think everybody's going, but the truth of the matter is. Everybody's not going. He ends up in hell. And now he's trying to send a postcard to his brothers. Get this right here. This is what I love about God. Is that God makes us stand on our own choices.
destroy, yes. but it builds up. Yes, sir. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, it's the fire that'll melt broken hearts. It's the fire that will that will melt cold hearts. It's the fire that will cause stiff necked people to loosen up something. Yes, sir. It's the fire that will change the church's appearance. It's the fire that separates us from the world. When you walk in the room, a difference ought to be felt yeah. because of the fire or the anointing that's on your life. Yeah. 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 Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm, I'm going to cut through this thing here now. Watch this. Watch this. Here come this rich man here. He's on fire. God wants fire. He wants us to be hot in the church. Watch this. The second thing that God wants to see in the church is prayer. Mm -hmm. See, now he's in hell. Now he remembers how to pray. Sometimes we don't we don't call on God like we should until we've gotten ourselves into a mess. And then you want to come crying out, Lord, have mercy on me. But, but watch this. He's in hell. And the thing that God wants to see in church is fire. And he wants more prayer. Yeah. Little prayer, little power. Yeah. Much prayer, much power. much power. God wants the church to be a place, a call, the house of prayer. Yes, sir. Prayer still works. Prayer freed Peter and Paul and Silas from prison. Uh -huh. Prayer delivered Jacob. Prayer gave peace to Gideon. Prayer. Is what God is looking for us to exercise. Yes, sir. Get this right here. A church without prayer uh -huh. is going nowhere. Amen. Now remember this. I'm, 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 I'm cutting this thing out. I'm going to trim this thing so we can get out of here. Watch this right here. Now he's got the message, but he got the message too late. Uh -huh. What's the point? I'm going to say something out there. Don't y'all take this the wrong way. What's the point And coming to church Sunday after Sunday yes, and not believe God? Come on, come on. Yeah. Not live for God. Yeah. And then I'm dying and going to hell from the church. Come on, man. What's the point? What's the point? You might as well just stay out there and do whatever you want to do. If you're not going to be for real when you got in here. Yeah. 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 Everybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, now you're in trouble. Now you want to pray. And prayer needs to be in the church. Yeah. The last thing we need to see in the church mm -hmm. is awareness of who God is. Really is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was on fire. Uh -huh. He tried to pray. Uh -huh. And then he finally recognized God is bigger than me. Yes, sir. But it was too late. Anybody try to slow down after you saw the blue lights? It's <laughs> too late. It was too late. Amen. Too late. Amen. You set up straight and put the hand in 10 and 2 and all that stuff. But it was too late. Everybody understand what I'm saying? And here he is now. He's gotten himself into this situation because he lived the life. Abraham said, in your life you received good things and he received evil. He said, but now the tables have been turned. You received the evil and now he's received good things. Church, I want you to see this. Is that when we are done, and I want us to be sober-minded about this, it matters how we treat people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It this text proves yes, that it matters how we treat people. Yes, and I'm telling you, sometimes we have, we pick and choose. 
who we gonna show respect to. We pick and choose who we gonna be nice to. We pick and choose who we gonna show love to. But the text shows that, watch this, God is seeing all of it. And, 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 and this man lived like, like he was going to live forever. But when God called his name, in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Boy, whoo. When my mama used to whoop me, I still have flashbacks. <laughs> she was a homologist, specialist at that. But she whooped me in. And I, I had a famous line, Gerald, that I would say Mama, I'm going to do right. <laughs> Why she whooped me? I'm going to do right. I'm going to do right. And she said, I believe it. <laughs> After this whooping. <laughs> Watch this. Don't end up in hell trying to tell God, I'm a dude. Right. It's too late then. You got to make up in your mind. You got to make up in your mind. Everybody thinking about heaven. Everybody talking about, man, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But you got to understand that there's a hell also. There's a hell also. And if you show God, if you don't have time for God down here, if you're so consumed with you and yours, doing this and going that, you, you got all this, and you never have time for God. But then when you get to heaven, what you going to do? That's all I got for y'all today. <laughs> you can't send postcards from hell. Parents, talk to your children. Grandparents, talk to them. One man plants, another man waters. But God gives increase. <laughs> They may seem like they're not listening, yes. but keep on telling them about the love of God. Yeah. Husbands, why did they not say? You keep on telling them about the goodness of God. Yeah. We had a pastor friend of ours he was in the club before he got saved. Every weekend. She came to church and she said, God told him. Start getting this stuff ready for church. Every Saturday night, he'd get up and go to the club. He played in the club. She said, he'd come home from the club and she's ironing his suit. Got his shirt hanging on the door. He said, what you doing that for? In case you want to go to church with him. Week in, week out, she kept on doing it. Casey decided to go to church with her. She said, the Lord told her, take his guitar. And I want you to anoint it. Pray over it. She went in there and prayed over it. He went to the club that night and he came back home and said, I don't know what's wrong with my guitar. It don't sound like it. He went back again. He kept coming back to that. It don't sound like I got your suit in case. You want to go to church with me? He went to church. Holy Ghost got a hold of him. Got saved. That same guitar. God gave it a new sound. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this. He went from playing in the club, playing in the church. He went from grandstanding in the church to standing behind the sacred desk. Pastor, leading the people. Because she kept on saying what God said. And some of you right now, I'm telling you, 
you have more power than what you think. Yes, sir. And you allow what they say back to you to stop you from saying what God said. Yes, sir. Keep telling me. God gonna save you. God gonna deliver you. You keep telling them. They need to hear. I'm praying for you. When I prayed in Atlanta, she told her kids, I pray God let nothing work in your life until you say yes to Him. Because we open the door in your condition, you will stay out there. Keep talking. Don't you give up on your own child. Don't you give up on your friend. I know they might be in trouble with the law. I know they might be on drugs. I know they might be making bad life choices. But you keep on telling them about a God that can turn everything around. Keep on telling them. And he can save me, he can save you. If he can save me, he can save you. If he can lift me up, he can lift you up. If he can bring me in, he can bring you in. If he can turn me around, he can turn you out. He can No way to the door, no way to the late. Open your mouth and tell them something. Let them know mama praying for you. Let them know dad praying for you. They feel like it's not working. But God can take that little bit. Keep on working with it. They might not listen to you, but somewhere along the line, God will send somebody else. And then they're going to remind them of what mama said. They're going to remind them of what granddaddy said. I see you. I see you in the house. Keep telling them. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. But you keep telling them. I see you with your hands up. I see you giving God glory. I see God changing you. You got to keep saying it, church. Don't get to the place where you give up. And then try to get in hell. Send a message back for you. Too late. But keep telling. Keep telling. None of us came the first time. None of us came the first time. Situations got a hold of us. Life had to beat some of us up. We had to be abandoned and rejected by some folks. But when it was all said and done, God worked all things together for our good. church, I remember, one thing that I remember, them sitting in the back of the church, wasn't nowhere near no church, but they came to church that Sunday, Dick and Dalton, and I told one of the ushers, I said, go tell those two brothers right there, God said it's time, that's all they said to them, pastor said, God said it's time, they came up, got saved, both of them now, are in ministry now. Yes, sir. Listen to what I want you to see. I don't care what it looks like right now. Prayer yes, sir. can turn the table. Yes, sir. Prayer. Yes, sir. I'm praying for you. Yes, I'm praying. Everyone stand. I pray. I pray. I pray. I pray. Standing over my child. 
Watch over them. Keep them in your care. Be there when I can't be there. Talk to them, God. Send somebody that, I, that they will be there. And in due season, he's going to do exactly what he said. Yeah, yeah. Every hit by. I'll 